What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Sega Genesis Day. And basically, we are 20 years and 10 days since the last official U.S. console launch of a Sega console or system, if you will. Today marked Sega's venture with their joining them directly, not some third party or other company putting out their products, but them directly putting out the Sega Genesis Mini. 40 classic games, two bonus titles never before released in the States. So this is pretty exciting. Uh, it is the 30th anniversary as well of Sega Genesis. Uh, many fond memories myself with this console. And today, basically, we're going to do an unboxing of this and playing through those 42 games. So let's get this started with the actual unboxing. <clears throat> Inside the box, you are going to get, unlike the PlayStation Classic, you're going to get a power supply. So your standard USB to AC adapter, which is nice, again. Uh, you did not get that with the PlayStation Classic. The only one of them that didn't come with a power supply, so you had to have your own little butt, if you will. You will get two controllers, which is nice for multiplayer games. The only downside to these controllers, from what I've read and seen, is they are the three button. They are not the six button. There are a few games, including Street Fighter on here, that utilizes the six button. An alternative to that is holding down the start and then hitting the buttons, which is kind of annoyance if you were a tournament fighter and really into the Street Fighter games. If not... You'll just have to punch everyone to death, is what it is. So again, two controllers included here with the system. You get a instruction manual, something that is not included with a lot of things now, so that is nice to see. In addition to that, you are getting the rest of it, and the cable is a um, mini USB on one side, or... Micro, same as Samsung or your, your Android devices, anything like that that has the port as well as the USB and to go to the AC adapter portion. Also included, this is a plug and play mini console like the Nintendo Classic, the NES Classic if you will, and the SNES or the SNES or the Super Nintendo Classic uh, as well as the PlayStation Classic. It's a plug and play meaning it's HDMI and it's that's all you need. No RF modulator, no coaxial. Nothing like that, you know, S-Video, uh, which is what I utilized when I had my actual Genesis back in the day. And then, of course, the main thing itself. Before we get into that, again, this is the box, retro styling with the grid, and then all the included games on the back here. So very exciting, very, very exciting. And then, let's pop this bad boy open. This is a really cool moment. I remember getting my console... Uh, 30 years ago and getting Sonic the Hedgehog on it and that was the only game I got at launch it was it was uh, around 1992 or 91 and I couldn't get any other games because the first off the system was like 200 bucks uh, until I beat Sonic the Hedgehog but I'd wanted it so bad and I'd learned the cheat codes to get to level select in Sonic the Hedgehog and I actually ended up beating the game within moments and showing my mother and stepfather at that time say hey I beat Sonic I need another game uh, as time went on, we ventured to pawn shops and other game stores available at the time, as well as Friday nights were the best night, because that meant we had McDonald's, as well as Video Time, which ended up turning into a blockbuster video, and meaning I got to take home a game for the weekend. And that was the majority of my collecting, was through um, playing rented games and then eventually purchasing them if I liked them. So this is it. This is the Mini. Much smaller size, as you can see, it fits in my hand, just one hand. Volume control works. Uh, I don't know if it actually works. There's no actual port for a 3.5 millimeter jack here. Um, on off switch and a reset button. Uh, you can also mount this to the Sega CD. They have a plastic version. It's just a plastic mount for the Sega CD. And then 32X and a game cartridge. Uh, some reviewers got that. Unfortunately, I did not, but if you want to send me one Sega, That'd be amazing. They don't actually do anything. It's purely cosmetic. Um, but some people can get their hands on them. And then obviously your DC in and your HDMI on the back. That essentially is the Sega Genesis. They also have what looks like to be... It doesn't actually open, but they did a good job in detail for the pop-out side here. Uh, it doesn't look like it opens, though. But 
what you're all here for is to fire this thing up and see what games they're all about. We're going to power through 42 games here, so stick with us and uh, hopefully enjoy this nostalgia trip as much as I do. So again, thank you for joining us. Stick with us, and let's kick it over to gameplay. What's up, everyone? Thanks for sticking with us. That was the intro video. What's up, Smalls? What's up, Trevor? Glad to have you. And Igor um, mentioned Dead by Daylight. Hopefully we can play that in a stream soon here tonight. Uh, if not tonight, uh, soon. Uh, we have NAW, NEW action tonight. But that's not what you're here for. You are here for the Sega Genesis Classic. Um, another look at the controller here. It is hardwired in. The other end is USB, meaning that we could potentially attempt to use other USB controllers. I don't know if they'll work or not, but something to try uh, over time of having this. So obviously we're going to set this thing up in English. It is the language that, the only language I know. Um, a fun fact though, if you switch it to Japanese or other region languages, you actually get the different box arts and variants of those games. So, meaning you're getting actually more than 42 games, you're getting different region variants of those games. Uh, while we might not try that out during this stream, we may try that out in the future to show you a comparison between two. Uh, it could be part of a video series we do here on DNA. But first and foremost, thanks for sticking with us. This is Dose of Nerd Acumen. This is our review, and you've seen our unboxing. We're going to power through 30 or 42 games here on hopefully a brief time period, enough to give you a taste of what this $79.99 piece of plastic and board offers you. Oh, immediately greeted with some really cool music here. I like it. Very cool, very cool. So we can sort by release date, A to Z, genre, number of players. What we're gonna end up doing is just power through release date. We're gonna take a nostalgia trip from the early days of the Sega Genesis, being its 30th anniversary, and uh, power through to the latest releases. I'll touch on some of the games and maybe experiences that I had with them, and I might even be playing some games for the first time here. We're only going to be dabbling in each game. We're not going to be playing a lot of them. Let me just kind of show you how the emulation runs. Because again, this is an emulator. It does not take cartridges. Uh, they get it wrong. It's supposed to be Alex the Kid, your former and best NEW champion. It's true. That's where uh, we came up with the name for him. So let's go to our settings, see what they have. Please read this before playing. Health warning. Yes. Screen settings. You have your... Um, Two options here, whether it be standard or widescreen. I'm not going to do widescreen because it distorts. Uh, CRT filter. I'm not going to do that either. It's more for basic stuff. Wallpaper settings. We can add wallpapers on the side. That's kind of cool. Let's do that one. Uh, staff credits. And we can reset the thing to factory. Uh, there are save files too, much like the other consoles, so we can save our... Uh, progress through these, but well, let's kick things off with uh, some Alex Kid in the Enchanted Castle, released in 1989. Some of these games I haven't played in over 20 years, so I might be terrible, I might have to learn how they work, but this will be an experience. Um, but it just feels right, this, this feels good, uh, just like when I was a kid control here. So we're going to do default settings. We're not going to mess with anything. So, Crash, what's going on? Yeah. Oh, shit, indeed. Here we are. Oh. So I don't know if it's emulation, but there is slight, and this might be through the Elgato. I, I, I doubt it, but there is slight input lag. And it might be because I'm capturing through Elgato. I haven't tried this outside of the Elgato yet. This is my first sit down with it. I mean, literally getting it moments ago. Um, and this could be the very well the game, too. I didn't play a lot of this game as a kid, so I couldn't tell you if it's the emulation, the system, or what. But there's a slight lag. Uh, I saw this, but I can't justify getting one so many Sega collections released on every system. Yeah, I'm, an, I'm a fan of these minis. I absolutely love the minis, so... Um, I just love being able to travel and have the controller 
Um, plus, I want to support Sega. I grew up on Sega. And very floaty jumping here, I must say. Watching, you're probably like, wow, you're terrible. But. Uh, Crash Fish, I see the feel. Yeah, they definitely appeal. <clears throat> What's up, Cody? So, it's just something about these retro minis. I, I fortunately have the four main releases so far being the uh, NES, the SNES, the PlayStation, and now the Genesis. I also have a Retro Pie, which has most of these games, if not all of them, but uh, the experience seems more authentic ish <laughs> on this. Uh, they're also releasing uh, early next year the Turbo Graphics uh, Mini. I don't have as many memories with that, um, so I, I can't say for certain if that's one that I'd pick up because I think they want $99 for that. Uh, it seems a little excessive in price. Uh, did you miss anything last night? Uh, I don't know when we lost you. I know you joined for a little bit. Uh, you missed a, a spider attack, Lana. I uh, never played any most of these games. I had Nintendo. Okay. I was able to get one of the SNES controllers to the Switch, so I totally understand wanting to have the Rift controller. That's awesome. I was looking at the uh, SNES controllers. Um, Money is a bit tight right now. I mean, they're only like $40, but still. Um, I have like six Joy-Cons. I don't, I don't. And a Pro controller. I didn't want to continue adding. Uh, so how do we get out? Do we just hit reset? Yes, okay. So, return to the main menu. You saw the spider tag, okay. So yeah, you didn't, you didn't miss much. All right, so that was Alex Kidd moving on. This is a game I did have, Altered Beast. Um, I, I don't remember the moment I got it, but I remember playing this a lot. I know there was a lot of critique about this game, whether it be good, bad. Uh, a lot of people liked the arcade version better. And this is kind of what Genesis, Perfected. They perfected the arcade at home, right? And it's a good port from the arcade. It's not great, but again, for for what you had as far as options. Uh, so if you've never played this game, the objective is quite simple. You defeat those little ox things, the two-headed oxes. Uh, graphics were again better in the arcade. Uh, eventually, you'll power up as mentioned in the, the audio. Uh, let's see if we can get it first try. See, Crash gets it power up. See, I'm getting buff. Eventually, I'm going to turn into an actual, well, if I don't die, an altered beast. Huh? Clever, huh? So this one has a little bit better responsiveness. So there we go. The first beast. So now I can fight the stage boss. This is a fairly short game. You can probably beat this in about 20 minutes if you're decent at it. It's not an easy game though. I said you could. Uh, this is really fun with two players. I, again, I'm not great at it. It's been a while. I actually have a t-shirt of Altered Beast, the Japanese artwork. Uh, I'm not so great. Um, Again, mixed reviews on this one for people. The emulation is a little bit more responsive, so it seems like Alex the Kid was just kind of, um, just the game, right? It was, a, it was an early launch title. Yeah, the last level, yeah. This game in general is just difficult, right? So that's the first level. Um, again, this is Altered Beast. A lot of mixed things. In Crash mentioned too in chat, there are a lot of collections out there that you can get on your PlayStation, Xbox, the Switch, uh, that feature a good chunk of these games. Uh, pretty good emulation on most of those. Uh, the mini consoles so far, this has been reviewed as the best one so far, and I'm not talking about the best Sega Genesis Mini. Uh, this is the first one again by Sega. Um, but this is the best reviewed mini console out there, which is surprising because the SNES was amazing. Uh, so let's move on here to our next one. Again, we're not going to spend a lot of time on a lot of these games. A lot of these games are old since we're so hard. Yeah, kids don't know what it's like uh, these days. <laughs> they have checkpoints, they have save states, autosave. Uh, eh, autosave. Shout out to Crash. Um, but a lot of those features, you know, they, they 
didn't exist. So you had to be good. And if you weren't, eh. So here's our next game here. Space Harrier 2. Um, not very familiar with this, I'll be honest with you. So this will be interesting. Alert! Fantasyland falls into crisis now. Uh, looks like we can pick levels. Stunna area. Okay, that seems. Let's do this. Uh, this is one that was pretty big in uh, arcades, so uh, I'm vaguely familiar with that aspect. Uh, emulation is fine. Responsiveness. Classic Sega, you know, music. All the audio levels. You guys getting uh, to enjoy these tunes here? Hopefully you are. Shooting trees and spaceships. And it died. Get ready. Oh, get ready. I'm back up. Okay. <laughs> Very arcade. That's where you didn't put in a new, another quarter or something. That's something, too, if you're not around our age. Uh, you didn't get a chance to play probably in a lot of arcades. Get ready. I'm not very familiar with this game, so I don't know what to expect. I uh, don't know really all the controls. It looks like A, B, and C all do the same thing here, too. So. Get ready? I get ready. I keep getting ready. I'm fighting some weird dragon thing now. Alright. Sounds fading. Looks like a boss battle coming up. Yep, sure enough. Wow! Get ready. <laughs> All right. So I'm fighting some weird turtle things, like a kaiju almost. Well, we are just awful. That is Space Harrier 2. I'm gonna be spending more time with each of these games, hopefully getting better and perfecting them, and uh, maybe do individual streams, playthroughs of each game uh, over the course of the next year. Uh, 42 titles, as mentioned. There's a lot here to play and unpack. I remember spending probably 100 plus dollars on Gauntlet in the arcade when I was on vacation with my cousin. My aunt kept giving us money. Yeah, Gauntlet's another game that sucks quarters. Great game, but damn, it's difficult. Ghouls and Ghosts, 89. 30 years ago. Uh, you gotta install Adblock on your phone. Don't do that. Here, now let's try this. I'm gonna make this full screen on my screen here. That might help me. Ghouls and Ghosts! Talk about a hard game right here. Uh, we've played this actually on stream as part of a weekly dosage episode. Uh, was it the Sega port? I think it was the Sega port of the game. Alright, so let's try this. Uh, th this is different than the Super Nintendo one. And uh, this was, I think, recently released on Nintendo Switch Online. With the Super Nintendo in there. Why not? We can't get revenue for the ads. I can't earn bids. Oh yeah, good point. Ah. Uh, this game goes beyond hard. Yeah, this game is not easy. Hey, more power. Uh, this is where you had the game genie <laughs> to hack things. Does anyone remember that? Oh, that's right. I could shoot upwards. I forgot. Uh, you son of a... Ah, see? See? what we're talking about, how oh, it's super difficult. Woo! Yeah, see, yeah, that's not what I want to do. Clutch accidental dodge there, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, th the fun thing about this game, you have to beat it twice to actually beat it. So, like, beating the game, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so I'll mention a million times during this stream, I am not good at, I don't think, really many of these games in this collection. Um, I'm not really good at a lot of games in general, I'm just an uh, enthusiast of gaming in general. So you'll, you'll never see me being like, yeah, I'll whoop you, because uh, that just won't happen. Your phone is a little behind, no worries. 
Uh, what games you missed so far? I'll go back to the menu and show ya. We're just going through release date. Um, as far as how we're playing these. I shot him, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, so that's Ghouls and Ghosts. Part of a great franchise there. Uh, return to the menu. So yeah, so far we've played Alex Kidd, Altered Beast, Space Harrier 2, Ghouls and Ghosts, and now we're moving on to Golden Axe. Released in the year 1990. So as of recording this, it is September 19th, 2019. We are 20 years and 10 days since the release date of the last Sega console, being the Dreamcast, rest in peace, and 30 year anniversary of the US uh, full on launch of the Genesis, known as the Mega Drive. Next two games are your jam. Uh, so, I'll do this dude. Golden Axe and Columns. Yeah, Columns, um, the, the reason I got familiar with Columns was because I had a Game Gear, and my mom would always take my Game Gear to play Columns. Uh, she ended up getting her own Game Gear eventually. I didn't want to do that, learning controls, but hey, I just wasted a power-up. <laughs> Alright. So this is a classic beat em up, right? This is uh, like Battletoads, games like that, that would eventually become incredibly prominent um, on the Genesis console. Uh, probably one third, I would say, of the Genesis released games were beat em ups like this. Uh, were they all good? Probably not. I played a good majority of them, and there's definitely a handful that I enjoyed. Oh, you little bugger. And thank you for that. Um, the other, another third of the console games released uh, were definitely sports titles. So Sega really put sports games, especially EA, uh, on the market and what to expect. Uh, some of the highlights were like NHL 94, uh, the Madden games. Um, those are pretty prominent. Ride it! I'm riding it. And that's what she said. Uh, so, this is Lizard Chicken Mount for the win. Oh, that dude just super kicked me. Oh, and he stole my mount. Get off it. What a jerk. Uh, some of these games you can actually get even on your mobile devices. They have the Sega Ages uh, series that they're doing, which consists of a lot of their classic Genesis games, um, including this one. This reminds me of some of the, the kind of looking guys from Double Dragon. If you've ever played any of those games or seen those. Uh, made quick work of that. Pretty cool. So this guy, this is a little like mini, mini thing between. He steals my stuff. Uh, I didn't play a whole lot of this. I played enough of this game to enjoy it. Does the mount have a secondary attack? I believe so. Um, keep in mind though, if you didn't catch the beginning, this is a three button controller. I, I believe only Europe and Japan, or maybe even only Japan, got the six button by default. I can order one, but the US release comes stock with only a three button controller, which is a problem for some of the games. Only a, a few, I think, on here. Um, you could still play them, but you just have to hold down the start button as an alternative. Yeah, boo indeed. Uh, that's the biggest critique. Um, but you can order one, they're USB plug and play, so um, they're probably pretty affordable controllers, but something extra to buy. So moving on to our next game here, and there are save states too, if I wanted to save anything, I have four save states per game. Um, columns, Puzzler. If you like puzzle games, Lock, this is obviously, if you know anything about Lock, he loves puzzle games. Uh, so it makes sense that it's... I was wonder if the ones I have would work. Yeah, they are USB. They could work. Uh, it's something to try in the near future for us, Locke. Okay. So, columns. Simple game, right? Shuffle your pieces around. I don't remember if I can rotate it or not. Or is it just oh, columns? Make a column. Um, so, we line them up. Similar to Tetris. That's fancy. Remind me when I come to record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
definitely. So, uh, this one isn't all that exciting to show off unless you truly like puzzle games. And I'm not really attempting to do anything of feat here in this. I'm just kind of showing you the, the concept, if you will. So you strain together some things, and uh, it's a good relaxing puzzle game if you enjoy puzzles. So that's that's column. Super simple. Nothing really to dive too deep into. Uh, again, a great puzzle game to relax and enjoy. Uh, good variety so far as we've seen as far as game types. Uh, we haven't come across a sports game yet, though, so we'll see if there are any on here. So we'll move into our next one here. And again, save states, you can save and load. And return to the game menu. Did I just not reset that properly? Return to the main menu. There we go. Let's hit the right buttons here, shall we? Column's just a time sink, not much to show off. Yeah, indeed, not, not a lot there. So Thunder Force 3 is our next game here. Released in 1990. Uh, it says it's a side-scrolling shooter, so just shoot 'em up. These were also pretty popular and prominent on the. Uh, oh shit! This whole row. <laughs> These were pretty. Thanks for the host, Kyra. These were pretty prominent on the Genesis as well. So anything to describe the Genesis: beat 'em up, shoot 'em up, sports games. So a schmuck, if you will. I do like cute 'em ups too. Those are cool. So yeah, schmups. Okay, mission level normal. How do we do this? Uh, not all too familiar with this. So, okay, we can just hold down B. Um, these are great. You get powers and stuff. So. Like, this is cool. Emulation, again, very little latency or input lag with this, and I'm running it through an Elgato, which does cause a slight uh, input lag. Not much on the newest model, uh, but it is very slight which means that there's even less when you plug into your console itself, which is fantastic news. Uh, this is one that I could probably sink a bunch of hours into, to be honest with you. I do love these type of games. And uh, Trevor, yeah, uh, stick with us. Have fun running in the store. We got a lot to get through here. Um, I don't want to make this like a five hour stream, but I do want to power through as many games as I can short amount of time that I have. So, this is cool. Like, I, I enjoy this. Emulation runs fantastic. Music is, is fine. Strike Gunner SCG is one we should do on the SNS. Yeah. Like, I'm down, man. I love retro stuff. I want to dive deep into the retro even more. Um, as you know, it was a series that I did in the early days of DNA. It was the Classics Lounge. Um, I really enjoy retro games. I'm not showcasing talents here, but uh, I'm just empowering through things. I'm not really, I'm being careless, if you will, as I'm playing. Uh, do I want it to continue? No. So let's head back to the menu, powering through our games list here. Uh, so we are on Castle of Illusion, a licensed game. This is pretty big deal. Um, first party games are generally would have been on these classic consoles. This is a licensed game. This is exciting that Disney has this on here. Or allowed it to be. Not to mention it's a good game. So we're talking kid-friendly console too. Great holiday gift. A Genesis Mini. Great gift. So difficulty normal. We're just doing default settings for everything again. We're not playing a playthrough or a completion or anything like that. What's up 181? Uh, and we're just skipping through dialogue. Uh, $79.99 is the retail price right now. Crash for one of these. Uh, equal to what the SNES is. Uh, you can get a PlayStation Classic between $20 and $30 now. In my opinion, it's worth that price point. And the NES Classic was $60 when that came out. So, okay. Slight. Okay, I can't jump on him. You know, to self. See, slight lag here, so as you can see, slight. 
But again, I don't know if that's because of the Elgato. Uh, Alex Kid was definitely laggy. As far as info lag or latency, whatever you want to describe it as. Um, so I get the items, I can. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Bro, why are you jumping? So I can throw those as I collect them. I only have four left, so. Greedfall. I've never heard of that one. I'll have to look that up. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. So we're getting hurt. We have power. We can get five hits, it looks like, before we. Uh, if he dies. Ah. Uh, there we go. That's better. So cool looking game visually. You got the parallax scrolling in the background. Uh, it's the game where the reveal teaser was a dude chasing an elf out of the woods. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm familiar then. Oh, I don't have any more items. I'll just skip you then. So I throw apples at people. That's fun. I got attacked by a giant tree monster. <laughs> What's that on? There we go. Some gaps. High jump. He, he jumps really high. It's kind of floaty. Alright, we got this. We got this. What's up, Wicked? Oh. There we go. Dragon Age Witcher 3. Ooh. Okay. PC exclusive. Alright. When you're playing Disney, I'm going to Disney World. Hey! Perfect timing. Um. Ah, crap. I'm not a big um, PC gaming guy. Not that I have anything against it before I get comments below um, <laughs> or in chat here. Uh, it's just one of those things that I, I just don't play a lot of PC. Uh, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Good to know. So. I haven't played PC games since. Uh, Command Cocker and Sims. That's pretty much primarily it. Lost Connection, that's okay. Glad to have you back. Hardcore PS4 Switch. Yeah, Nintendo is my, my number one. Um, and then, depending on the game, Xbox, PS4, and then very low on the list is PC. So, Strider, this is a fantastic game. Eight mega power, as Game Sack would put it. Uh, have fun, friends. Wolf pack for life. So we got Strider here. Lock heading back to work. Have fun. I'm dressed up because I had some uh, interviews today. So crush your fingers. So here we go, Strider. Big sprite like this right here showcased the power of the 16-bit era. Um, giant sprites. This is this was unusual for the 8-bit era, obviously. Uh, they were limited to capacity and what they could do. The one thing I always found annoying about this game was the sound effect for the actual weapon, uh, which is different depending on the region. Uh, so if it's uh, PAL, uh, it's, it's different sound effect, meaning that Europe got different sounds. So, pretty cool game. Um, very reminiscent of like uh, like a Mega Man, if you will. Not really a beat 'em up. More like an action fighter, action platformer, I guess. Pretty cool game. Again, the the impressive thing here is the size of the sprites. Uh, and you gotta mention, CRTs back in the day, too, we didn't have these giant 70-inch TVs. At least most people didn't. Um, you were probably working with anywhere between a 16 and 32-inch CRT if you were, you know, fancy. So to have a giant sprite, to have a big picture like that, this, I mean, it made the thing look even more brilliant. Uh, so that's Strider. Nothing, again, uberly spectacular, but we'll keep plugging away. We have a lot to get through. So our next thing here is, of course, the first game that I ever played. Did I murder Hulk Hogan? Yeah, it looked like that. 
the very first game I ever played on the Sega Genesis. Sonic the Hedgehog, 1991. Uh, so many memories. I was six years old, and it was that perfect time where I had a full comprehension of how gaming worked and really dove into them. Uh, so one of the things we'll do here, we'll play it standard and then we'll do the cheat code, see if it works on this emulation, which I'm assuming it will. So the thing about this one is it did not have the downspin like you saw in uh, other ones. So let's go fast and see how the, the game emulates with the tears. Get some momentum going, good lord. Gotta go fast. So there we go. I'm wor wondering about the frame rate, see if it drops at all. So this is where you gotta worry, because this game's all about momentum and speed. And I mean it's 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 good. It's not as bad as some of the other ones out there, that's for sure. So, not bad. Not bad. It runs pretty well. Uh, it feels very natural. Playing on a Genesis controller, that is. So the bonus levels. Oh. My, how these were uh, something. Let's see if I can do this. There we go. Okay. That was focus. That was focus just for you. So we got a Chaos Emerald. You collect all those supersonic, it is. Uh, I mean, you truly 100% the game. So let's try something here. And what that is, we're going to return to the menu. We'll see if we can do this first try. Um, I don't know if it'll work, but we'll see. So this is it right here. Up, down, left, right, hold A, then press start. Uh, you can do the level select. So this is what I did as a kid. <laughs> I went right to the final zone. And uh, fought uh, Robotnik. So this is uh, the end of the game. And uh, as mentioned as a kid in the beginning, um, I wanted more than one game because Nobody just wants one game for their console, especially back then when some of them were so incredibly short. Uh, the side effect of going to level select here, you don't have any coins, which I don't think you have any coins going into this boss battle anyways, to be honest with you. For the final battle. So let's see if I can beat this. Focused here, I don't want to mess up. One more hit should do it. Let's see though. Nope. It's gotta be the next hit. <laughs> so there we go. Eh. Wow. Still not. Okay. How many hits does he take? Anyone remember? It's like something like seven. There we go. So now he runs off. I chase him. Again, get some extra damage. And that's what I did as a kid. I went and ran upstairs and had them take a look and say, Hey, look! And I beat the game. <laughs> so, yeah. That's how quickly you can beat Sonic the Hedgehog. So, one of the coolest ends here goes through all the credits and then it goes through all the worlds uh, and all the cool music of the game. Uh, obviously, if you're talking about the Genesis, this is the most iconic character for Sega and this console. And this is, again, Sonic. Alright, heading back to the menu, continuing on our journey. Toe Jam and Earl, 1991. 
Another good soundtrack. There's a lot of games they didn't put on here, uh, understandably so. You can only put so much on this thing. Um, Ren and Stimpy, I played a lot of that. Growl was one. Uh, any games, chat, that, or comment below if you're watching, uh, that you uh, didn't get on here or didn't see on here. So, very strange game. You go and collect things for your ship. Um, they did a sequel to this, or like a remaster almost, somewhat recently. Toe Jam is a wiener. Girl is on vacation. So, strange game. It's it's not the greatest of games. A lot of people like it because it was different, and uh, obviously we're talking about nostalgia here. Very of the time, though, graphically. And I don't mean the pixelation, I mean the style. This was very early 90s. So, like, fashion and style and hipness, if you will. Very exiting from the 80s into the early 90s. So, of the culture at that time period, it was definitely influenced. But yeah, this is Toe Jam and Earl. Um... They had a sequel on this console as well. Uh, I don't know. I don't think it's on here. We'll find out though. Moving on, of course we have Wonder Boy in Monster World, released in 1992. Here we go. Monster World was once a peaceful region. Then the peace was shattered by an invading army of monsters. A young man named Shion vowed to defeat them and make his land peaceful again. All right, so we need to get out of this house. Oh, he's very floaty. I don't like that already. I have never played this game. Uh, this looks very much like a RPG side scroller, which is very cool. Let's go into this tree. Who is this person? Can I talk to you? Oh my goodness. There we go. How do we speed this text up? We're not here doing a playthrough, we're just playing the game. Hey, okay. Oh, oh. So our first monster, and it is indeed a leveling progression. We find gold. As you can see, there's a bar there, which allows... Well, maybe is. Yeah, it looks like I am getting experience points of sorts. Oh, can I grind levels? Do you come back? Ooh, bouncing coin. Hey, you're back. Okay. Or it could be the damage that I'm doing. I don't know. Is it going up each time? Is it coming back? So I could just grind here, get a bunch of gold, and defeat the same enemy. So. Um. I mean, not much to it, really. Uh, very basic. We'll move on to our next one. This could be one really interesting to sit and dive into to learn more about. It's not one I played a lot of, but it plays really well. All right, Alessia Dragon, Dragoon, sorry, excuse me. Uh, released in 1992. I don't believe this is one I played, an action shooter starring Alicia. I don't know if I played this one. So some of these are gonna be very new. Oh, wow. Looks like the same design as uh, Altered Beast. <laughs> same art. Wonder if it's the same company. I haven't even looked. Let's hop right into gameplay. Hey, where are you going? Stage one. Go 
Oh, so you're walking. Alright, so... You have like a lightning bolt thing, that's interesting. So it's a side-scrolling shoot-em-up. You have a dragon friend to help you out. This is different. I'm getting hurt, though. Stop hurting me. Yeah, I don't hate this. Uh, it's just very different. I definitely have never played this, to be honest with you. So this is very new. And with the hundreds of games that was released on the Sega Genesis, I mean, you can't, you could play them all, but uh, I did not. All right, upgrades. I just want to hold this down. Can I just hold it down and shoot? Button mash. Alright, so it looks like we got through the first area. Not bad! Uh, this could be fun with two players if that's possible. Pretty neat game. Let's move on to our next one here. And I am hitting the reset button, by the way, on the console each time to go to the menus. I don't know if there's a shortcut. I haven't really looked at the manual. Uh, we can look at the manual. We usually never look at the manual of things. It's just kind of how it works. Uh, let's find out. There's not much to the manual. It just kind of tells you what uh Hold start on the control pad during gameplay to stack. This is just me. Okay, so holding start. I don't have to keep hitting reset. That's that's a relief. All right. So I think that's what happens when you read the instructions. Kid Chameleon, released in 1992. During gameplay, it even tells you at the game menu. Yikes. We are learning because <laughs> we're not reading everything. We're just... This, again, I literally got this an hour ago, and now I'm here live with you all. So. And this is launch day. Let's see what this game is all about. Okay, so can I jump on you to hurt you? Oh, very floaty. Very floaty. So, Mario wannabe. Very floaty control. Kind of feels like, did, did anyone play and comment below um, Krusty Super Fun House? Like it feels exactly like that, even how the character kind of floats around on the screen. Um, that was like a Lemmings kind of wannabe. Uh, fun game, Krusty Super Fun House. I played a lot of that. You'll float too. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Um, that's just how it feels, you know. I wonder if I can hit the tough note. Still not. But yeah, it feels like Krusty Super Fun House. Interesting for sure. I don't know if necessarily. Um... Oh hey, you bounce on those. Look at the 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 water background. That's a nice touch. The shimmering. I don't know if that'd be described as shimmering properly, but you know what I mean. Not bad. So let's try this hold down start thing. You have to hold it down for several seconds. Wow. I don't know how I feel about that. So that was Kid Chameleon. Um, eh. Super Fantasy Zone 92. Uh, this is definitely one you've probably heard about but may have never played. A lot of people talk about it. A lot of collectors have this in their collection. Sunsoft, if you're unfamiliar, makes a lot of cute, uh, cute games. And this is known as a cute em up. So, much like a shmup, uh, this is a cute em up or it's a shoot em up, but it's cute. 
So we were doing terribly to start, but uh, let's try this game. So very cool. So you can go left or right, which it's not a fixed uh, progression to the right. You control whether you want to go to the left or the right. And what I'm speaking on is the screen itself, where a lot of shoot 'em ups would have you going along the plane of the game. So, so pretty cool game there. Again, we're powering through a lot, so we want to make sure we get through that in enough time. Sonic 2. This is where a lot of people. Shout out to Irob if you're watching this back. Uh, and this was his favorite and first game that he played. Uh, he was a big fan of the Genesis as well. Um, this is where a lot of people kind of had their entry point into the Genesis of Sonic 2. So most people probably had the, this game. I uh, introduced what I talked about earlier, that feature. Which became a prominent feature in the Sega games, or the Sonic games on the Genesis from there out. And of course, introduced Miles Prower, Tails, into the franchise, which was a great sidekick and companion for Sonic. Eventually, obviously, if you saw the anime or cartoon, if you will, Saturday morning cartoon, uh, Chili Dogs, uh, iconic characters. Bonus ring levels were indeed the shit. This one had the. Uh, the running one. Let's see if we can get to a checkpoint here to do one. Yikes. There we go. I don't want to get hit. I want to hit a checkpoint. Oh, there was a checkpoint up there and I missed it. Damn. And on this level. We'll see if we can get the bonus ring level in the second one. Uh, it's where you ran a half uh, a half pipe and uh, had to collect rings, basically. So most people are going to have memories with this one out of the series over other ones. Uh, personally, I enjoyed Sonic and Knuckles. I really had a blast with those games. Unfortunately, they are not part of this collection. Uh, licensing issue as far as like music soundtrack which highly disappointing because really you should have all the Sonic games if you're gonna have a, a classic right um, but again unfortunately they did not put those on here so talk about the biggest disappointments would be that on this thing um, they're 50 now where's the checkpoint I want to be very careful here so I want to get to the bonus ring level. I need a checkpoint thing. There we go. So this is for you, Neck. So very cool, uh, very different as far as power too from the console. You saw the bonus level in the first one we played. I eventually enjoyed Sonic Adventure. Yeah, Sonic Adventure was a lot of fun. Cool. Get 80. Ah, yikes. Don't tell me what to do. Oh, oh we just missed that whole batch of them. That's not good. <laughs> You'd lose friends with two people in this one? Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, yelling at each other, telling each other to go to a certain side to get the rings. Definitely frustrating. Four rings to go. Will he do it? Will he do it? Will he not make a mistake? 
You jump to switch, that's right, I forgot about that. So there you go, we got a Chaos Emerald now in this one as well as the first Sonic. I just try to get in front. Yeah! <laughs> I do remember that. That is funny. Uh, so this is Sonic 2. We'll go on to our next game. Echo the Dolphin. We've talked about this on the channel before. But now here it is, right? We finally get to play it. Um, we talked about, Caleb and I talked about this in a podcast of his. This is one of his fond memories. Right, check that out. That's on Spotify, as well as Apple Podcasts, and any other major podcast platforms. I believe it's episode three of the Ghost of Nerd audio. So, so yeah, Echo the Dolphin. Forgot it existed, yeah. So I was always confused as a kid on what the heck was the point of this game other than just like swimming around as a dolphin, which controls surprisingly well still. And there's Sonar can talk. How high in the sky can you fly? So, very interesting experimental game. But honestly, like, visually it still holds up really well. It controls well. Um, I still don't know what the hell to do, but this is Echo the Dolphin. This is a very good looking game. Uh, yeah, so I'm not really certain what to do, but we're not doing playthrough more so, just showing off the system. But this is Echo the Dolphin. Very cool. Uh, I, I have a feeling I'm going to be showing my son that one, see if he can mess around with it and uh, have fun with it. There's not a lot of enemies on screen at that time, so. Road Rash 2. Uh, shout out to Mikey. Uh, if you watch this later or uh, are watching, uh, I know you're excited about this one. 1992 for Road Rash 2. Uh, Electronic Arts. Let's see how well this held up graphically. The last time I played a Road Rash game, I was just kind of like, this is what I liked? So. Alright, controls. There we go. B is to go, C is to punch, and yes, punch. You can punch the other people you're going against. I just knocked him off his bike. You got rear views, the side mirrors there. Oh, oh, I forgot the handling. <laughs> yeah, still tough. Plays really well. I do not remember the life of me, the name of the game, but I have to say that it was a Metroid style shooter sure, running around to strip bugs and eggs. Uh, Ranger X, I think, is what you're thinking of. Do a Google search on that. I could be wrong, but I think it's Ranger X. I don't think that's on here either. I don't know if it is or isn't, but... Rude Boy! <laughs> the character's name is Rude Boy. Call Rude Boy. Anybody want to sing? No. Oh my god, both cars! There was no way. <laughs> Look at this dude. Ha <laughs> uh, Pretty cool though. I mean, this isn't bad. Uh, it reminds me a lot of the Formula One game that I played on the Atari, which was the first video game that I recall ever playing. I was like three or four years old. Um, it's the first one I ever remember playing. From there I went on to play uh, Super Mario and other games, but uh, the one I remember the most that like, I, I could figure out was a Formula 1 game on the Atari. But yeah, this is Road Rash. Pretty fun. Uh, I could see myself. Stop watching to Google it. You were correct. Awesome, Nick. Yeah, I, I had that cart, um, Mac, I do remember, that's why I, I 
figured out what you're talking about fairly quickly. Okay, you want to talk about beat em ups um, on the Sega Genesis? This is one of the greatest of all time, right here. I put in a lot of hours. I actually did a Classics Lounge episode with iRob on this. If you want to hop on over to our YouTube, unless you're there already, check out our playlist for Classics Lounge. Uh, we played through this entire game, and uh, it was such a fun time. Hated and loved that game. Yeah, mixed mixed feelings. If you're speaking of Ranger Zack, Ranger X, that is. So yeah, as much as I'd love to, and you gotta go skate. Skate was my man. I was an inline skater back in the day too. Hours of my life wasted on Rampage. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is so good. The soundtrack to this. I had this on the Genesis and my Game Gear. So much fun. This is one you definitely are going to be happy that this Genesis Mini comes with two controllers because you're going to want to sit and play through this game countless times. I promise you that. Order a pizza, get a case of beer, and man, this is a great night with your buddies. And this is definitely more so for the age group um, that lived through this system. Um, I don't think this is going to appeal to a lot of kids now. I, but then I, I could be wrong. I don't know how many kids these days are like appealing to nostalgia stuff as it's not really nostalgic for them. Uh, if they release like a 64 mini or a GameCube mini for those kids, they'll probably get a kick out of it. But this is a specific era that was born sometime in the 80s to even early 90s that is going to get a kick out of this console or this mini. What's up, Batman? Better grab that knife and cut that neck. Oh. Uh, so I could spend a lot of hours on this game here. I'll probably play through the first level for you. Sound sounds great. How's the audio mix coming through you for you guys? Can you hear the sound really well? Uh, this, the, the one game that, too, I wish was on here, and we talked about licensed games being on here, uh, No Ninja Turtles. I'm super bummed about No Turtles in Time. Because uh, that would have been a fantastic add to this. Uh, I played through that a lot as well. It's pizza time. As you're noticing too, the game only allows so many sprites on screen, and sprites are the characters. They do that because otherwise you'd have a lot of lag. You'd have a lot of, I guess not lag, but frame rate, not lag, frame rate issues. Uh, there has been no frame rate dips noticeable, anyways, so far in this game. This game runs super smooth, and plays really well, very responsive, uh, very solid experience on this, in this dude right here. Stab you. Watching without sound for a bit. Right on. I uh, used to love these style of games. Yeah, Batman, these are fantastic. This guy right here, though, he's tough. Uh, they have a new Streets of Rage, I believe, coming out. I haven't looked much into it. I know there's a new Contra coming out, too. Hardcore. Or not hardcore. What's the name? I can't remember the name. Uh, it looks weird. The reviews have been weird. Uh, scam at Pizza Hut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This. God, this right here makes me so happy that this game's on here. I know it's been on collections before, but there's just something about playing this game. Oh, through the table too, jerk. Ooh, he's getting me. Too many enemies now. Pizza Hut sounds good too. I'm gonna have to have some pizza in my near future. Alright. Uh, what system am I playing on? Um, I'm actually playing on the Sega Genesis Mini, so the brand new console, mini console that came out today. So this is part of the 
collection. Um, so I'll show you. This came out today. It's a little plug and play mini console. Uh, it's, this is one of 42 games on it, with two games never before released in the States. This is cool. Yeah, very cool. Uh, just kind of doing a review and a, to show everyone how every game runs and what it looks like. And a trip down memory lane. Electra fighting a woman now. I don't feel right about this. You can't hear me? Oh, you don't have audio on. Do not hit me. We'll move on though. I could play this one. I, I could see myself easily getting hooked back into this and playing through it and be like, hey, just one more level, one more level. Let me show this to you. Let me show you that. Uh, but we got to get through a bunch here. As you can see, we have so many more rows of games. World of Illusion, starring Mickey Mouse Donald Duck 1992. So yeah. And we'll do a recap at the end of this as well, talking about each game real quick. Um, We'll continue our progression, though. So again, thanks for the, those sticking with us and tuning in for this live stream. And then if you're watching this back on uh, YouTube, thanks for the view. Hit that follow and subscribe button. Uh, if you're familiar with GR pretty well, you remember the Pizza Hut 44th? Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, I grew up between uh, 44th and 36th off Burlingame. So that was my stomping grounds. I've only been in uh, the Ann Arbor area for 10 years almost now. I guess not only, but <laughs> a third of my life now. <laughs> I was there also playing the arcade games, same that over now. Oh geez, really? So that is what caused it to burn down? Streets of Rage? That's terrible. What's up, Raided? Classics right here, indeed. Boom. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Uh, there we go. Ooh, piece of candy. So yeah, this is World of Illusion, starring Mickey Mouse. Uh, another one of our licensed games here on this. Uh, I'm fired. Thanks. Thanks. I thought there was just like a, a saying or something. I didn't know it actually burned it down. Jeez, man. That's craziness. <laughs> Raid has got to do it. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> That's what I made it for you all to troll me, so use it wisely. <laughs> Alright, so that's World of Illusion, another licensed game, very exciting addition here for the kids. Uh, plus it's a good game. Yeah, Batman, that's rated for you. He's a, he's a degenerate. <laughs> Parents joking me about that for years. Yeah, you burned it down. Shining Force, 93, our next one here on the Genesis. You do love to troll me, I appreciate the love and support. Uh, I wouldn't be so proud to do all the stuff that we do if it wasn't for you guys. So, uh, y'all make uh, this stuff so much more worthwhile. Disney game is dope as well. Music is great. So yeah, the soundtracks to these games too. Um, a lot of these I have as ringtones on my phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, this is an RPG. Will be. How many games on this? 42. Let's do D and A. Nice to meet you, DNA. Yeah, thanks. Oh my! I don't want to talk. I just want to show the game. 
Is where this faction Genesis got their name? I don't think so. I think it's more so probably the Bible. Golden Axe is the real dungeon of life. Yeah, Golden Axe is a great game. Uh, so this is an RPG, which is a nice addition. Kind of looks like Dragon Warrior. Um, a little bit more visually enhanced. Not even the Bible. Oh. Uh, so we're not going to dive too much into this. As you can see, it's, it's an RPG. I don't know enough about it to share any facts or feats. But it's a nice addition to have an actual classic RPG on there. Gunstar Heroes, though, 93. Uh, this is a run and gunner. 1970 rock band from England. Ah, that band, Genesis. It makes sense. I just thought Cross, because the name, you know, uh, Cross, that's why he had it. Phil Collins, he knows. Batman knows. Gunstar Heroes. Here we go. I made a boy band. <laughs> So I can level... This is actually a really good game. I played this, um... On the... Classics bundle on the Switch. So I bought that recently as well. And this is actually a really solid game. So one of the differences between the, the Classics on that... on the Which is available on Xbox One and... Um... And this is the rewind feature is not available on this. The rewind features on the console switch PS4 Xbox One. Uh, that has I think roughly 50 games. Um, but this is a great run and gun shooter. A lot more fun with two player, that's for sure. That dude is really alright, come on. making me mad. I need that. How do I get that? Why can I not get you? Why did I have to push two buttons? What the devil? Finding some weird plants. Defeated! So, great game. Better as a two player game. Uh, still fun experience as a one player. Moving on. Shinobi 3. This is a great addition, too. 93. If anyone's played the Shinobi games, there are other other uh, games that are not easy. There's a lot of difficult games on this thing. So you got your superpower, your star, like the dress shirt and tie, very classy. Complacent. You gotta, right? It's the classic, classy. <laughs> Thanks. I actually had. Uh, interviews today so that's why I'm still dressed up. I got this, unboxed it immediately, I was just so excited, I didn't want to wait. I was going to do this potentially tomorrow, but I was like, you know what, it's launch day today, I'm doing this today. We're going to celebrate today, the 19th of September 2019, 20 years and 10 days after Sega Dreamcast released in the US. It is the 30th anniversary of the Genesis, we're celebrating classics, so that's, that's why. You can't be classy, celebrate classics without being dressed up classic unintentional but it, it, that's the story now I'm sticking with <laughs> so yeah this is a uh, classic side scroller fighting game um, not too difficult so far I'm sure it ramps up in difficulty. Great stream on Dead by Daylight. Thanks! I, it, was, it was interesting. <laughs> uh, last night, Dead by Daylight was a lot of fun. I did okay. 
guys right here, okay. Uh, we got a boss fight now. I can't shoot projectiles at the boss fight, I gotta actually fight him. That <laughs> seemed a little easy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Shinobi 3, Sega Genesis. Especially the spider. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, check out our Dead by Daylight stream if you haven't yet. Andreas freak out with the spider was quick comical. 93. Uh, champion edition of Street Fighter here. This is exciting. This is the one that I wish I had a six button controller for because I can only do punches unless I hold start. And then I can do kicks. But if you like fighting games, you are going to be happy for this. This is the one I remember the most besides Mortal Kombat as a kid. Um, Guile is a classic. Vega is great. Of course, you have Bison and Sagat. Um, some of these are unlockables, but because it's Champion Edition, you get to play as those characters. Let's do Ryu. Chun Li. Of course, this is two players as well. Uh, show you what I mean. I can only do punch, 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 and punch. Hold start. Kick, 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 kick. So. It's, I mean, it's it's fine, but the six button controller would be much better experience for this to have variety in my fighting. Otherwise, I'm just throwing, you know, punches and kicks. And it looks like I just have to tap start and then it switches. I'm not doing well at all. I'm a spammer at Hydukens. Should whip my ass. A uh, six-button controller is going to work much better in this game, so. That is Street Fighter. I want to play more, but I want to get a six-button controller. If anyone want to donate a six-button controller to the show, uh, let us know, because that'd be amazing. I'd love to have one. Landstalker. Our next one here. Alright, Landstalker. I don't know much about this one, so we're gonna see what this is all about. Looks like another RPG, potentially. I'm not even playing yet, this is just kind of setting things up. Do I have to watch all this? <laughs> oh my. Yeah, so... It's an RPG platformer, you get the idea. I'm gonna move on just because of the sheer length of whatever was happening is happening there. Sonic Spinball! Lock. What have you done? This is by far the least favorite of my games on this thing. I, a lot of people like it. Lock especially. I did not care for this game. I don't know why. So it's exactly what's in the title. It's a terribly controlling Sonic by another team, and it's a pinball Sonic game. And pinball is good, but the game controls like not so good garbage. And it's not the emulation's fault, it's just the game itself. It's not good. That's my personal opinion. Sorry. Sorry a lot. I'm moving on. Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. This is another puzzle game. Which, if you played the recent Sonic game on the Switch as well as the PS4, Xbox One, uh, this was actually a cool, fun, secret boss. Not really secret, but a surprise boss on the game was fighting Robotnik as the Mean Bean Machine level. 
So, puzzle game has a story mode here. And really cool stuff. It's, if you've played a puzzle, you've played them. Kind of play similar to Puyo Puyo. If you've played that. And you just have to get four of these things together, and then they do that. And your object is to beat the other person's score. I could dive more and play more, but that's really the gist of the game. Nothing crazy. Eternal Champions. So fighting game, uh, I'm gonna have to admit this is this is another one that's a weak entry. I know a lot of people like Eternal Champions. Um, while it's fine graphically, this is this is not mine. Did X Men? It did not. So that would have been a much better choice than this. Uh, as, as you can see, this is it's fine. The sprites are cool looking, but uh, not a great fighting game. So this is another weak entry for the console. So far, only a couple weak entries. Starfire. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Bloodlines, Castlevania game. Uh, great addition here. Uh, if you're a fan of the Castlevania series, this is a, a pretty good one in the franchise. Not the best one, but it is a pretty good one. It's no Symphony of the Night, but no. Time Splitters, yeah. Didn't like Sega the way he started the load. <laughs> so here you go. This is your classic Castlevania experience. Looks pretty good on the Sega. Most familiar Castlevania was more of a Nintendo title initially and then ventured off into other platforms. So. Yeah, class experience, nothing too crazy. A nice addition if you like Castlevania. This is a, a great one that you can sink a bunch of hours into because it's not an easy game either. Yeah, that is Bloodlines on a basic level. Uh, again, just powering through games. If I'm rushing, I apologize. There's just a lot to get through here. Not a lot of time. Contra Hardcore. 94. So Contra was another one that was pretty big in the arcade, made their way onto Nintendo, and then became just a huge franchise. Um, and then kind of fizzled out into the 2000s. There were some releases, but not, not anything noteworthy. They do have a new Contra that's coming out. Uh, reviews have been mixed so far. As far as early copies that have been sent to reviewers. So classic visual style, if you will. Of the Contra game here. I mean, it's no Super C, but it's a, it's a good entry and a good thing to have on here. So. Moving on. So Earthworm Jim, 
We played that on a stream before. So, this was uh, one that's it's, it's a pretty fun game, actually. Not easy. We struggled with it on the stream. Go check out the weekly dosage. I want to say it's episode 63 in our archives. Uh, we played this with, uh, I want to say Mike. It's either 63 or 64. I uh, can't remember which one, but go check out our archives. And yeah, Raid, if you want to see more of this and us having a blast with this game, um, check out our archives, the weekly dosage, either 63 or 64. Thanks for the host, Batman. So, I'd play more, but we have a bit of archive in that on our channel. I'd love for you to check that out instead. So that is on here as well. Dynamite, Hetty, 94. Heady, Hetty, I don't know how it's pronounced. Fidel, thanks for the follow. Glad to have you. So, here we go. Show off a little bit of this one. Parallax scrolling, good visuals. This is quite interesting. I have never played this game. No clue what I'm doing. Looks like I'm damaging that guy. I mean, visually impressive game. This is late in the life of the Genesis. Uh, cool game, not really sure what I'm doing, but that's Dynamite Heady. The Superstar. Mega Man The Wily Wars. What this is, uh, this was originally only available on Sega TV, if you remember that back in the day. Uh, it's something that you bought a cartridge, you attached your... Uh, internet basically to it and you could get games on a monthly subscription basis and this never was released as a cart uh, now it is on here and it is a remaster if you will of uh, Mega Man 1, 2, and 3 in 16-bit so being that Mega Man 2 is my favorite Here's the downfall, right? It's using the sound engine of the Genesis, which is not awful, it's unique. Um, it just sounds different than the NES. Visually, the game looks great. And Mega Man is incredibly difficult. But visually, the game looks fantastic. And the thing about Mega Man, you do have some uh, latency as far as frame rate issues, that's just how the game unfortunately functioned. Uh, but you actually have um, Mega Man games here on the Genesis, which aren't really a thing. So, uh, again, available from the Sega TV originally. Now, 1, 2, and 3, not remastered, but revisited. Can't say it. Visual uh, in 16 bit. Fantasy Star 4. And I died. I did. Mega Man's not easy. Uh, Mega Man is great. Fantasy Star 4. Another RPG. I'm not going to dive into this one. Um, this is an RPG. Uh, Beyond Oasis. Another RPG. Again, I'm not going to dive into that. Just because it is what it is. Uh, another RPG, Light Crusader. So these three won't be shown here, unfortunately. They're just your standard RPGs. Comic Zone, incredibly difficult game here. This game is amazing as far as like visual ideas and concepts. Um, really tough though. I've never actually beaten this game. It'd be something I'd love to try for a stream sometime. 
So you actually go through the pains through the cells of a comic here, and it's a beat em up. Very responsive controls. That's one thing I'm noticing about this. So yeah, Tetris made it on here too. Tetris was an unreleased game. That's uh, a competition variant of it uh, that has never been released on the console. So that is new here in the States. So this is Comic Zone. Again, nothing uh, too incredible. Very fun game, very difficult game. I love the art style. Vector Man. So very late, we're seeing at the end of the Genesis into the Sega CD and Saturn time period here, uh, which is about when this launched. So they're really pushing the limitations of the console. So 3D visuals, uh, around the time of the failed 32X as well. Uh, this is another somewhat difficult game, pretty neat. Uh, the, the gameplay and the control of the character reminds me of Cool Spot, if you ever played that. Which was another interesting game, but also difficult. So I'm just going around collecting these things, and that's the gist of the game. So, that's Vector Man. Virtua Fighter 2, um, 3D Fighter, basically from an arcade ported onto the Genesis. Uh, it's better in the Saturn, to be honest. Uh, it should not have been on the Genesis. It's, it's not bad, per se, but it's not amazing. Better on the Saturn, which is where I had the game. I did not have it on the Genesis. It was actually full 3D on the Saturn. Bro, I'm trying to bust you out of that right here. Yeah, that's how you win. You just spam the whole game like that, and you can win. Yeah. Virtual Fighter. Uh, fighting game, good variety. If you're into fighting games, I'm sure you can have some fun with it. Um, Monster World 4, another RPG. Darius, uh, Taito's 86 hit shooter. Daniel san <laughs> So, this is uh, another one that's making it to the console for the first time. I believe this was an unfinished or cancelled game that is is now on here. So, I don't know the full story about it, but I know this is the first time that is on in Genesis. At least in the States. What's up, Bat? So yeah, this is Darius on the Genesis Mini. Just another side-scrolling shoot-em-up or shmup. Not terrible. So again, for the full story for that, do a little bit of research on it. But that is, again, released 2019, the 86 hit arcade shooter makes its official debut on the Genesis Mega Drive. This fifth port comes with brand new special mode where you face off against all 26 huge battleships. So yeah, first time ever. And then of course also, the iconic game that captured the hearts of players worldwide to find the following block puzzle genre. Mega hit arcades across Japan. The Fable Genesis port is finally available to play here. Uh, how many streams do I get for watching this? 10 every 10 minutes. <laughs> so 2019 release. These two are new. The two bonus games, if you will, to the Genesis Mini. Uh, thanks, Rated, for the host. So again, two bonus games. You get 40 plus two bonus. Darius and Tetris here. That's part of it. And uh, this is just your most iconic... This is, it's Tetris, right? Uh, to make such a big deal out of Tetris coming in the system, um, I don't know why, but it's Tetris. 
So, nothing crazy. I'd love to elaborate more, but you all know Tetris. So, we'll recap here. This is release date. Alex the Kid, Altered Beast, Space Harrier, Ghouls and Ghosts, Golden Axe, Columns, Thunder Force, 3, Castle of Illusion, Mickey Mouse, Strider, Sonic, Toe Jam and Earl, Wonder Boy, and Monster World. Alicia Dragoon, Kid Chameleon, The Cute'em Up Super Fantasy Zone, Sonic 2, Echo the Dolphin, Rogue Rash 2, Streets of Rage 2, World of Illusion, Shining Force, Gunstar Hero, Shinobi 3, Street Fighter 2, Special Champion Edition, Landstalker, Sonic Spinball, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, Eternal Champions, Castlevania Bloodlines, Contra Hardcore, Earthworm Jim, Dynamahiti, Mega Man, The Wily Wars, Fantasy Star 4, Beyond Oasis, Light Crusader, Comic Zone, Vector Man, Virtua Fighter 2, Monster World 4, Darius Darius, Tetris. There you have it. You can also do this too, if you want to sort them by the spines. But, Sword of a Million is not on here. There's a lot of missing titles. Um, put in the comments if you're watching on demand or whatever, or throw us out there right now what, what they're missing. Uh, but ultimately, this has been our review. I'd give it a 7 or 8 out of 10, just because of the missing. Can you plug in cartridges? No. No cartridge option. Uh, there's no expansion option either. So this is what you get. $79.99 retail price in the States right now. 42 games, HDMI, two controllers, the Sega Genesis Mini, the classic, if you will. Uh, one of the highest rated ones out there. And uh, honestly, I had a lot of fun playing it. This has been a really cool experience. I'm, I can't wait to dive in more and play more of these games individually on individual streams. For those that tuned in uh, or missed part of the show, go back and watch for some of the other titles. But thank you all so much. This is Dose of Nerd Acumen's review and take on the Genesis Mini, available now online and in retail stores. And no, this is not a promotional thing. I did not get paid or any sponsorship. This is just a proud, nostalgic moment. So I do have to say that this is not a paid endorsement video. But for those that tuned in, thank you so much. Check out our weekly content on our channel. And until next time, take care, everyone.